Alright guys, before we get into the following video, I just want to announce the most incredible thing that I'm pretty sure you guys have been wanting for. A Discord server. Not too long ago, I had a poll asking you guys if you want me to create a Discord server and almost 100 people have agreed, yes, make a freaking Discord server. So that's what we have done. With the help of Lore, Sleep, and Sir Beerus, we have brought together this server, okay? I gave it a tacky name and a tacky logo, but the name is called Armando's Lounge. I'll be putting a, this, a link to this in the description below. Check it out. Like I said, anybody is welcome. You can basically promote your channel, ask me questions, because many people have always been wanting me to make a server so they can talk to me, ask for advice on editing or the game. And like I said, I feel like this is just the perfect time to do this, seeing that, you know, we accumulated such a huge fan base for this game. And I just want to say thank you guys for all the support. Come on in, ask any questions away, but keep it very PG-13 because I don't want to come back and find out you guys posted some crazy stuff on this server. Now, without further ado, let's get right into the video. How's it going, everybody? My name is Armando, and welcome back to another Death Frontier video. So, guys, I never really understood why someone just didn't cover these questions in the Death Frontier forums or something. Oh, wait, they have! Why do people keep constantly asking about these specific questions? Well, usually because they're genuinely new players and have no idea how the game functions. Or, they just refuse to listen to any advice and just continue to beg. Either way, the reasoning for this making of this video is because I'm so tired of hearing these questions. Honestly, every time someone asks me these questions, I feel kind of bad because they usually end up more confused when I give them the, an, an answer. So, I hope you guys at least find this type of information useful and continue to cause mayhem in the inner city. Now, without further ado, let's get right into the first question. Alright, the answer to this first question is quite simple. That is either through winning TPK, Clan TPK, Clan TS, or regular TS. The pistol that I'm currently using is called the X Dusk Enforcer. I did not receive this weapon because I hacked the game, but because of the clan called Fear of the Perfect Dark. One day we all got together and decided to just run for Clan Top Survivor. It is a brutal thing to do, but we had some awesome members back in the day. Specifically, the leader named Minion Joke. Of course, when you win as a clan, you have access to the X-Dusk Enforcer, X-Dusk Helmet, X-Dusk Razor, and an XXL X Security Box. Of course, most people who run for Clan TPK or TS end up buying the pistol and razor. After acquiring the pistol, you automatically have unlimited ammo and require no bullets for the weapon. The other one is about the Wraith Cannon. Now, I know it's hard to believe when people ask me about the Wraith Cannon since it's such an infamous weapon, but again, there are some new players to the game and they have no idea about these weapons. So, let me be really clear about how to obtain the Unlimited Wraith Cannon. To obtain the Unlimited Wraith Cannon, you must go through a very hard and difficult quest that not only messes with you emotionally, but at the same time, financially. It is such a difficult quest that many players who desire this weapon end up never obtaining it because of it. To obtain this weapon, you must take your credit card, go to the credit shop, and spend $500 on the weapon. That's it. Okay, does this answer your question for the unlimited items? Cool. Next. Ah, now we're getting somewhere. Now this one I'll go in depth. So, as you all know, after leveling up, you get 5 points for stats and 5 points for weapon stats. The most common thing I see, and I did myself back in the day, is go, hmm, let me spread them, and that way I get equal benefits from these points. Wrong! Don't ever do that. Ever. What usually ends up happening is that you end up with a character that doesn't really excel in anything when it comes to fighting the infected. Furthermore, after dying too many times and wasting all your cash on ammo and medicine, you end up just quitting Death Frontier altogether because you're stuck now. You can no longer go to Fort Pastor, you can't even go to the South Bunker because at this point you just don't have the resources you need in order to continue the game. Again, don't ever spread your points like that. It is a bad idea that will shorten your time on Death Frontier. Now, how should you spend them, you ask? Well, that all depends on what you want as a player. For example, I'll give you my ideal character. I'll always start off on agility, critical hit, endurance, strength, and finally, accuracy. Why? Well, if you think about it, every weapon is pretty good at killing the infected in the inner city. Now hear me, you're probably also thinking, how can you compare a wraith cannon to a pen knife? Well, I'm not. What I'm trying to get across is that every weapon is pretty useful as long as your critical hit is high. For example, the machete. It's a weapon that's not really looked at when it comes to hunting down the infected. 
but it's a great weapon to clear most of the infected. Why? Well, it takes out normal zombies in one hit, burn or green zombies in two, and spiders and tenders in three or four hits. You're thinking, what? No way! Well, this is only achievable if you have a high enough critical hit, which is what most new players lack when it comes to fighting the infected. People buy the 577 Rex and fail to understand that it's a weapon that can kill most of the infected in less than 5 shots. You just have to level up that critical hit, man. Next is agility. I don't have to say much about it because it'll allow me to hightail and run away if I have to. Next is endurance. You can take more damage and more hits and lower the risk in the inner city. Not only that, but you'll be able to run for longer periods of time. Strength is next because it'll allow you to equip better armor and better weapons. Of course, last is accuracy. Your shot will always find their targets and you'll be able to pick them off at a safe distance. Not only that, but every bullet will count and you'll be eventually hitting your targets in no time. I bet you're asking, what about reloading? Listen, if you can't control the situation without having to reload your gun and put two seconds then I don't know what to tell you. You're just a noob. <laughs> now, where should you place your weapon stats? Again, this all depends on what playstyle you desire. If there's one way to word this, I'll quote one of my subscribers, Sir Beerus, also known as Cool Guy 7 in Dead Frontier. He basically said, there's really no perfect build out there. Which I entirely agree upon. You can go crazy and just use loud weapons like shotgun, machine gun, and grenade launchers. Of course, it's very expensive to maintain, but hey, at least you're getting a kick out of killing all those infected at the same time being extremely loud. But if we were to take this question very seriously, I'll tell you my ideal weapon setup. First, you need a silent weapon. Pistol, rifle, or melee will work just as well. For me, I go with melee as a silent weapon. Not only that, but you'll be saving your money on bullets. Next, I use a pistol because I'm not going to go toe to toe with a boss and let that thing be as close to me as possible. I have to have some distance between them or I risk the chance of me dying because I didn't have a weapon for some far distance combat. Last but not least, I had to go grenade launcher. Why? Well, if you're playing the game how you're supposed to, you're most likely going to go into the inner city and trying to make as much money as you can. Unfortunately, you're eventually going to get hit with an aggro spike and you're pretty much going to get swarmed by the infected. So that's where the grenade launcher comes in. Get behind the wall and just watch as the infected fall before your grenade launcher while you're safe behind that wall. Not only that, but you'll be gaining a ton of experience because of that. Now, if I remember correctly a while ago that if you stand still, you won't be rewarded with the experience. So do me a favor, strafe a bit to the left or right just so you won't risk it. Last but not least, I bet you're thinking about PvP. Well guys, PvP is a whole different thing, alright? I'm pretty sure you're gonna need about uh, 500 million implants, uh, drug booze, and uh, yeah, <laughs> let's just end it right there. What is the best area to loot in Death Frontier? Now, I know this could be easily answered in one sentence, but again, let's get a little detail on this one. So, as we all know, we have the blue zone, green zone, orange zone, black zone, and last but not least, the white zone. So judging by the way I ordered these, you all know that the best area to loot is the white zone. Many people may be asking, but isn't it better to loot on the NEZ since, this, since that's also a white zone and it's closer and blah 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 blah. Well, no. As far as I'm concerned, for some odd reason, and I've had several people tell me that the southeast end zone is a lot more successful than any other looting area available in that frontier. Now that I told you where to go loot, I bet you're asking now, where is the best place to loot? Well, if you go to this specific area, you'll not only have the bunker to loot at, but there's also a hospital in the exact same area. So not only are you looting in the southeast end zone, but you're looting two buildings that have the most available loot possible. Let me just cover a quick thing about this topic before I'm done. Not too long ago, there was a rumor that Admin implemented that if you loot the same area for a long period of time, your loot chances begin to drop significantly. So remember, walk around, loot different areas, and enjoy the open world that Death Frontier has to offer. Not only that, but if you're brave enough, you can also try to kill bosses that invade the White Zone. But remember, you're in an area that offers a better chance of looting a legendary, so I say go for it. You can easily make around 100k an hour on this area, and that's me just taking a number out of the top of my head. I looted here back then with gold membership for just 3 days and made 3 mil with just 3 hours of, of looting a day. For non-gold members, I'm not too sure, but I'm pretty sure you can still easily make around 100k an hour. Alright guys, so I hope I managed to answer all of your following questions and that I gave a bit of insight. There are hundreds of questions in the Death Frontier community, and if you want to go watch another video of this, leave a like in the video below. Go ahead, go crazy, and I'll try to answer your best questions to the best of my ability. Alright, so this is Armando signing off, and I'll see you sexy bastards very soon. Take it easy. Bye.